team names, so I hope you're all working on your, on your team names. Put that on your first answer sheet, and Pat will transfer that to the board. Uh, arbitrarily, Pat will decide who the best looking team is, the team most respectful of our authority. Uh, the team that brings up their answer sheets the quickest, that actually puts their name on the sheets, etc. And the most ecologically sustainable team. Alright, moving on, quickly. Where Pano's gone up for a header and George Best has turned up right from the bottom and gone back. Gone back. the task you face in taking on the Japanese champions? It's massive, you know, I mean we have to play against a team that's probably ten times bigger, but I'm hearing uh, probably more than that, <laughs> you know, we have to play away from home. <clears throat> uh, uh, the team we're playing against uh, have just played their final of their league, you know, so they're, they're probably coming uh, from having played uh, 35 or 40 games, we've only played five games. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, situations in there that make our game very big for us. Uh, I know that a lot of people were thinking, well, well, you guys did last year, you proved to the world that you can actually compete at this level. And, and I agree, I think we did great last year, but we, we need to remain uh, very humble uh, to make sure that we prepare for this uh, the way we need to, which is something that is bigger than us. Uh, so we need to make sure that we understand that the step uh, that we need to make to, to, to compete at this level is, is, is something that we can do, but we're not going to do it unless we prepare really well for it. And that's been our focus and, and I think we were on the way to, to achieve that preparation. How does a club of Hiroshima's size compare to, to Auckland City? You touched on it there. But... Yeah, I think, look, I, I don't know the numbers, uh, but obviously, <laughs> It's got to be more than 10 times or 20 times. I mean, you look at the budgets, uh, you look at the infrastructures. Uh, we watched that final, the return leg of the J League the other day against Gamba Osaka, and I think it was nearly 60,000 people at, in a fantastic stadium. So when you compare that to where we play, our home, what we've got at home, which is you know great for us. We've got a great uh, little ground at Kiwitia Street, but obviously the dimension of our club is a lot smaller than the dimension of any other clubs participating in this Club World Cup. I mean, maybe Hiroshima is the smallest club after us, you know. There's other clubs in there that are a lot bigger, like you know, obviously River Plate and, and, and Barcelona. So, again, and with that, you know, we need to stay humble and, and with, with that attitude, um, I think we're putting a massive effort into it, all of us, uh, the staff, uh, the players and, and the club, to give us the best chance you know, to compete on the 10th and, and again I think the preparation has been pretty good and if we learn the two or three things that we need to consider coming into this game and, and in terms of how we attack and in terms of how we defend against these guys at the end of the day this game of football is played on the grass and all the rest uh, becomes secondary when it comes down to, to a football field, a football match. You know? Why have New Zealand teams found it so difficult to succeed in Club World Cups hosted in Japan? 
don't know, maybe because uh, we're playing, you know, we have to play against a very good team. So the Japanese teams are very good. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, the Japanese players naturally are very gifted, they're very fast. Uh, they, they have a fantastic competition in the J League, which uh, puts them uh, continuously on a week in, week out uh, into a very competitive uh, scene. So they're used to that. You know, I think our, our national league is getting better, but obviously, uh, with all respects, uh, we still need, uh, we still have a good, you know, good, good room in there for improvement. Um, so we have to acknowledge that, again, as I said before, we are a lot smaller than uh, any other clubs in this competition, and, and, and that's what uh, when we come up to compete against uh, the J League champions. Uh, don't forget that Japan is one of the you know biggest nations uh, in Asia and Asia and probably in the world, uh, all you have to understand uh, and accept that you're the underdog and the normal thing is that they win. But this game of football is, uh, is a little bit funny sometimes. Uh, it's 11 to 11 uh, again when, when it comes down to, to the on-field thing and, and with that uh, desire and that attitude we will uh, try to face the J League champions uh, with uh, positivism and with uh, the confidence that we know what we have to do to compete well in the game. How important uh, the experience of players like Jacob Spoonley and Emiliano Tade, who have played in past World Cups uh, with a, a degree of success? We need a bit of that, you know, we need a bit of that because again, you know, coming from where we're coming, uh, we're going to jump into a field of uh, an 80,000 seater. Uh, maybe we, we have around 30 or 35,000, like for example last year. So it's a big step, it's a different scene and we need players that are used or they have experiences, past experiences in these situations because you know everyone's different in life and sometimes when you have to step into that scenario, a scenario that you're not used to, um, when you, you, you get pushed out of your comfort zone, uh, you know, uh, people react in different ways and uh, you will agree with me that if you have experience in that respect uh, obviously you, you, you can take that step in a, in a bit of an easier way than you haven't got experience. We have some youngst uh, new youngsters uh, that are potentially very good and I think that you know they're growing quickly uh, but they haven't got that experience so with these experienced players we need to help them to you know to readjust and to understand what they're going to be facing and to, to help them uh, yeah, uh, go through the emotions uh, quickly and, and focus on the game as soon as possible and understand that at the end of the day it's still a uh, game of football. You take on Sinfrici Hiroshima for the second time at this tournament. What are your memories of the 2012 encounter? Look, uh, I, think, I think it's a very similar team. Um, you know, same coach, uh, same ideas, same structures in position and out of position. Uh, a lot of uh, similar players, I mean a lot of players are the same, sorry. Uh, so I'm expecting uh, probably a very similar game. You know, so I think that's a good reference for us. Uh, we, we've looked at that game uh, quite a few times to try and understand uh, what happened, why did we lose the game, which things we, we could have done better. Um, and obviously we, we followed Hiroshima since uh, October. So we've got uh, plenty of information and footage about them. I think we've got a, a clear idea of what the game is going to be like. And again, we've got a good reference uh, if, you, if you look at that game on, in 2012. And uh, with all that information, uh, we are trying to prepare to, to you know, take the opportunity to, to the maximum. Why did Hiroshima get the better of Auckland that night in 2012? Look, I think, I think we, in 2012 it was not the beginning of the way we are playing now, uh, but it was uh, it was it was the early stages of a, a change in the philosophy and the way we played the game. You know, and some of those players or a lot of those players had any experience at that level. And I think I think that with the ball, uh, the team, not structurally but mentally, could have done uh, a little bit better. Uh, but again, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult to step up to that uh, level in a one-off game, especially when, when you don't have the, uh, the experience and when you are trying to play in a bit of a different way. So there's always, obviously, doubts out there. And, 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 and I, think, I think right now we, we're a little bit further in this uh, process of learning a different way of playing the game. We are more mature with the way we play with the ball. And 
you know, I'm hoping that the team will be more composed on the ball this time around. You know, I think we're a different team, and and again, we've got more experience, and we we have uh, acquired and achieved the mechanisms that we've been working for uh, quite a few years. And, and I think we feel we, we, are, we feel we are very confident on the way we want to play with the ball, and I hope that that's going to help. You know, uh, I think last year we, we did a bit of that. We proved that again against a team like Salvador in the semi-finals. <clears throat> uh, we, we finished the game uh, unfortunately with a loss, but we managed to have 57% of possession against an Argentinian side, so that proved that we have matured with this way of playing the game. And we just hope that this year we will uh, play with the same maturity, uh, with new players, with the same maturity with our ideas, and, and we can compete uh, for the game once again. What would it say about Auckland City's progress if you can get past Hiroshima on Thursday? I don't know. I don't even want to think about it, to be honest with you. Uh, look, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I've read a whole my thoughts about that. Uh, right now it's just a matter of making sure that we prepare really well in position and out of position uh, that we understand how we have to defend against these guys that are a very particular team in the way they attack and that then we've got the uh, maturity as I said before and the belief that we can uh, play, implement our position style regardless and that we understand how we have to implement that position style. You know. That's, that's what's going to give us the opportunity to be very competitive on the 10th and then what happens after, well, we'll talk afterwards.